All right. Once again, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rekakwadash. Double and I say apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. So all the Archeums worldwide, I want to say Shalom be unto you. This is the word from the GMS Trail.com. Just bring out a quick edification tree spirit of the Mosai. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai. My topic is Who is Israel according to Deuteronomy 28? Uh, Deuteronomy 28 is a very important um, scripture in um, the Bible. It actually breaks down a certain type of people. Um, Deuteronomy 28 actually tells you about the curses and the blessing that the Most High Yahweh Hashem and Shai will have given unto Israel. Blessing if they keep His commandments and curses if they will have break it. So, who is Israel according to Deuteronomy 28? Um, or let's start with Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. But if, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, how much shall shine thy like God, to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes which I, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thou be, shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall thou be when I come it in, and cursed shall thou be when I go it out. The Lord Yahweh Shemeshai shall sell unto thee, cursing, vexations, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thy hand unto or to do. Until thou be destroyed, until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doing, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord Shem Shai shall make a pestilence cleave unto thee, until he has consumed thee from off the land whether thou goest to possess it. I'm um, now jumping on to verse 28. The Lord Shem Shai shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. 29. And thou shalt go up at noonday as the blind go up in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only a person and spoil evermore, and no man shall save thee. So, yeah, so when you look at the, the Negroes, Latinos, and the Natives Americans, we are the ones who more or less we go there and we work hard, but then we never have. You will probably have the same paycheck as from someone from another nation, but then they are able to succeed with that same paycheck. And then your paycheck, it's just like you at the gate, it's just gone. You just don't know where your money going to. Verse 30. Thou shalt be trot a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Um, now this actually goes back to days of slavery. And when Esau used to actually be taking our wives and sleeping with them in front of us and stuff. Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell therein. Yeah, because when you really think about it, the Negroes, Latinos, and the Natives are the ones who build America. We build Egypt. We build a lot of things and we weren't actually able to dwell in it. We were just slave dwellers. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt gather the grapes therein. Yeah. When more or less you're working in the field, you plant, but you're not able to, to reap what you plant. Yeah. And so, um, all these actually made up the cases. All these cases actually are from more or less for us to say. A way for them to know actually that this is the people that they were talking about. Um, so when I jump down to verse 48, or I'll start at 47. Because thou servest not the Lord, how much I shine like God, thy power, with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord, how much I shall send against thee. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in all want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon the neck until he be this, he have destroyed thee. That yoke of iron around your neck will go back to slavery again. 
when they used to put that yoke of iron around our neck and sold us in the market as chickens. Yeah, that's actually a case of the Mosai Yahweh Shem Hashem upon Israel. And the Lord Yahweh Shem Hashem shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flight, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Yeah, the Europeans, a nation of fierce continent, which shall not regard a person of old nor so favor to the young. Yeah, whether he is young or old, they sold their slaves. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee neither corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or the flock of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee and all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down. Uh, well, that's going off the topic a little bit, so. Let's go. Alright, so I'll jump down to. We start from verse 65 again. Verse 64. And the lawyer of Hashem shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, unto, even unto the other. And there shalt thou serve other gods, which, were the, which neither thou or thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Yeah, that's even all these false gods I see Israel up into these days. Um, Allah, Krishna, Jesus. All these, all these other gods you serve, that's actually a curse that the Most High put upon you, you Negus, Latinos, and Native. And among this nation shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. But the Lord of Hashem shall give thee there a trembling heart, and a feeling of eyes and sorrow of minds. 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night. And shall have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, With God have we even, and at evening thou wilt say, With God it were morning, for the fear of thy heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thy eyes which thou shalt see. 16. And the Lord of Hashem Shai shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spoke unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there he shall be sold unto your enemies as bond men and bond woman, and no man shall buy you. So yeah, that's that's why we came across the unslaved ships. Where the only people in history came across these waters on slave ships to be sold as slave. We are the only people in history. So when you go at um Haggai chapter one Verse 5 and 6. Now, therefore, thus said the Lord, the Hashem, and the of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and as bringing little, ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there, but there is none warm. He that earn wages, earn wages to put into a bag with holes. Yeah, that's a curse that we have. Now get fee and your money done. You can never have enough to eat, you can never have enough to drink. All those are curses that are the most high you have a shame I put up on you as well. It's a curse. That's a way to know that this Negos, Latinos and Natives is the children of Israel. We're the only one who down to the bottom and everyone high above us. Yeah, and that's because we went off of the laws of the commandments of the Mosai. We go to Haggai chapter 5, verse 4. Ye have drunken out of water for money, our wood is sold unto us. Yeah, so we cut our own wood or, or, or we, we labor in, let's say we labor in a factory, you know. 
And then we still had to turn around and buy back our own labor. You know, we have drunken our water for money. <laughs> we pay for even water. If you jump down to verse 13, they took the young men to grind and the children fell under the wood. Yeah, they took our, uh, when we were more or less were slaves, we just stole our young men. We saw how our children picking cotton in the field. And they didn't have no problem in that. They used to like those things. But now, well, hey, he's so, you is the wicked, you know. Because when you really think about it, kind of wicked things Esau used to do to our children back then. And everything was all fine and good. And now you just so sort of forget about it. And now if you were to lash your child for doing something good, Esau would want to lock you and throw the keys for punishing your child for doing something wrong. But then look how you used to treat our children. How come you're not in jail right now for the way you treat our children? Joel chapter 3 and verse 3 And they have cast lots for my people Yeah, they sold into slavery And have given a boy for a harlot And a girl for wine That they might drink Yeah, so we were sold in slavery They, they, they used to have us in any in in more or less any market on a, on a Sunday, you could probably say, on a big market day. And we used to sell us, cast lots, and enjoy life. So when Esau is going to pay for all this that he has done, is it that you say sorry and you go on with life and answer it? No. That's what scriptures say. The scriptures say in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. He is the patience and the faith of the sins. Yeah, so on this Isa, you have your time coming. You enjoy life now. But our salvation is with the Mosai or our Shemeshai. And we know that the wickedness that you've done unto us and our forefathers and probably disparate back in the old times. You're gonna pay for it Esau and we're gonna rejoice to see you go back in slavery the same way you had us in slavery thus said the Lord in Hawa That's what the scripture said. We will rejoice to have your children picking cotton. We will rejoice to see your daughters and stuff being ravaged in front of your eyes. We will rejoice to see that. Yes, yeah, so all right, so with that um these were just some quick scriptures just to more or less pinpoint who Israel is. And according to Deuteronomy twenty eight, I hope it was edifying to you. Deuteronomy twenty eight actually have a lot of information that actually breaks down who is Israel according to the scriptures and all the cases that you on a 28 the Negroes, the Latinos and the Natives are the ones who go through those cases and so I just want to close with Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear Yahweh, Vashem Yishai keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for Yahweh shall bring every work into judgment and with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So I hope this was very fine to you. So I want to give a praise to say, How about Shemim Shai? Double and the same apostles. So I want to say, Shalom, be unto you.